Love is a precarious emotion, as when depicted in its highest form, can bring out the best out of a person to become their better selves. But when depicted in modern day media, in the East is incestuous at best, and in the West you end up getting an L, either through losing your loved one and becoming a husk of your former self, or in the case of this sweet girl, losing your loved one and getting a forced kiss. So let's look at the Monsterverse's first and only love that wasn't meant to be. And just from opening the box, we can see that the female Mudo, just like the previous Haya roster, was given the love and attention it deserved, as Haya toys spared no expense in intricately inscribing the immaculate details into every nook and cranny. Such endeavors are first witnessed through the elongated head in which the spiky shape of the Mudo's cranium stretches throughout its body. This is in addition to the smooth surface which is embedded with the various specks and markings on top. This is alongside the numerous wrinkles located beneath and the back that in this time is composed of a soft rubber-like plastic that allows for the easy insertion or flexibility of the head when looking either up or down. But maybe the highlight of the head is the face that with the hawk-like skeletal structure especially portrayed through the streamlined face, the beak-like mouth, the highly detailed gigachad jaw, and the decepticon-like eyes, making for a beast as frightening at first glance and further highlights the simple apple-esque design. When regarding the body, it more or less consists of a small portion of the overall mass compared to either the likes of other kaijus, but higher toys still kept up to the high standards as the intricate sculpt that is painted with the extra dry brushing that aids in differentiating the various parts from one another. But a gripe that I have is that the underbelly or egg sacs that the female Muto possesses lacks the red and yellow glowing color scheme and instead retains a similar grey and brown paint job like the rest of the body, but still a great sculpt though. And no tail. But if the Mudo is confronted by either man or the alpha predator alike, the Mudo is capable of holding up a fight with the front limbs that of course are the longest of the bunch, but are also equipped with various ratchet joints that allow for some added flexibility. This is not mentioning the intricate details that are seen throughout the body, but the arm seems to have additional scars probably because they are the main mode of mobility and defense that the Mudo has, and of course the hook like claws that are powerful enough in piercing the hide of younger Godzillas and can be used when facing off hostiles. Just don't place her next to either mature Godzilla specimens or a specific man in tights. The middle legs are more or less identical to the front pair with the only variation being the appendages that connected to the body that of course is a ratchet joint and add a little bit of bulk to the Mudo. But the rear legs are a completely different beast as just like the rest of the Monsterverse roster, minus the skull crawler retains some <laughs> dies a double and cross knees that recreate the mundo's unique cross like shape and is connected via ratchet joints and a stubby feet with the dual toes that aid in maintaining the mundo's mass and something that the big g was also initially plagued with but maybe the most unique set of appendages are the inner limbs that this time around are situated above the bulging egg sac and happen to be far smaller in scale to the rest. But observing closely, the limbs possess a scrawny Palpatine-esque shape alongside a T-Rex-like double-digit hands that are useful when meticulously handling radioactive warheads or when dealing with pesky infantry, but are useless to what mankind would bring later down the table. When observing the assortment of accessories that the female Muto is accompanied by, there's this card though, so if you want extra details regarding the kaiju, here they are. When observing how the female Muto scales as one of the initial Monsterverse Titans, she was enormous at first glance and towered over most kaijus and mechs, but became less appealing with the consecutive kaijus released down the line. But the Mudo still stands tall as our child murdered mummy stands at 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches tall. Here's the female Muto next to Gumpla, SH Figuart, Figma, Hayatoy's Kong, the Big G, and a true extraterrestrial. 
If you've seen my previous videos, kaiju figures, especially those from high-end toys, are limited regarding posability when compared to your mechs or anime waifus. But considering the range of movement that the female Muto show throughout the film, abiding to screen accuracy is unlikely to be something difficult. Due to the previously mentioned soft plastic, the head can move only up and down, a jaw movement, up and down movement regarding the body is almost non-existent, but side to side movement is impressive. Limited front leg movement, bicep movement, is able to conduct a great side to side and a 90 degrees bend. The same applies to the elbow. The hook can freely move sideways, but vertical movement is stiff AF. The rear leg appendage can freely move front and back and a limited side to side movement. The inner arms can move front and back and the elbows as being connected by a ball joint offers a diverse array of movement. The rear legs can move front and back limited, but a leg spread is 9 with this one, stiff movement for both knees and a stiff and limited feet movement. So regarding articulation, it's not as impressive as Godzilla or a Gundam, but considering the source material, doesn't need to. So regarding my final thoughts, the high toys iteration and the first articulated release of the female Muto is another fantastic release, as high toys once again abided to the high standards regarding the kaiju roster, such as the immaculate skull, the impressive paint job with the extra dry brushing, the sense of scale that the female Muto is able to pull off, and the screen accurate posability. The only gripe I have with the figure is the lack of accessories as an additional warhead or a decapitated head would have put a smile on my face in recreating the kiss of death. With that said, if you can get your hands on it, I would highly recommend that you do so as the female Muto is a figure that I hold in high regards and will give it a ranking of an A.